When people talk about the deadliest, most dangerous dinosaurs, who's bound to pop up? T-Rex? Giganotosaurus? Both of these giants were born killers, but plant-eating dinosaurs are often overlooked. After all, they were the ones who had to defend themselves from the theropods. One of the deadliest groups of dinosaurs would have definitely been the ankylosaurs, who are known for their armored bodies and a flexible tail. But one clade of the ankylosaurs, the ankylosaurids, are known for an odd tail club made up of a handle and a knob. How did this bizarre feature evolve? Was it effective? And could it evolve again? Ankylosaurids belong to a group of dinosaurs known as the Thyreophorans, the shield-bearing dinosaurs. When I was younger, there was a rather mysterious dinosaur called Lasuthosaurus, whose placement on the dinosaur family tree was debated, and one of the possibilities was that it was a base Thyreophorin. However, the oldest dinosaur we are quite sure is a Thyreophorin is Scutellosaurus, which roamed what is now the southwestern U.S. 196 million years ago. About 1.5 meters long, Scutellosaurus had scutes on its back, formed by bony cells called osteoderms. In terms of posture, however, it's more similar to other early Jurassic ornithischians like Lysithosaurus. It's one example of the rapid diversification of dinosaurs in this time, which brings up an interesting question. Why would Scutellosaurus evolve osteoderms in the first place? Armor is very effective against anyone trying to eat you, but at the same time, theropod dinosaurs were evolving ways to combat this new defense, mostly by growing bigger. I'm sure you're aware of Dilophosaurus, made famous by being the venomous dinosaur in Jurassic Park. Actually, Dilophosaurus was much bigger, around 7 meters long and 500 kilograms, and probably could not have spit venom. But that doesn't change the fact that it was the apex predator of its time, pushing early Thyreophorans to the limit. So what happens? Natural selection takes over. Three million years after Scutellosaurus, we start to see much larger, heavily armored dinosaurs like Solidosaurus. Around 170 million years ago, we start to see this trend fall apart, and we have a divergence into two groups, the Stegosaurs and the Ankylosaurs. It's the Ankylosaurs we want to focus on here. The oldest Ankylosaur known is Tianchosaurus, but look at this picture of my Mora Pelta, which doesn't come much later. See how much more heavily armored this thing is compared to the older dinosaurs we saw? The ankylosaurs are a diverse group of dinosaurs, so paleontologists can split them into two major groups, the nodosaurids and the ankylosaurids. It's the ankylosaurids who have the tail club, more specifically the ankylosaurines, because you can still be an ankylosaurid but have nothing special on your tail, like Gastonia because of its specialized nasal passages, but that's complex phylogenetics and, let's face it, you just want to hear about how dinosaurs smash things. Look at this dinosaur. Cedar Pelta. Look at that tiny excuse of a club. If Ankylosaurs made club jokes, like teenagers today make dick jokes, I'd hate to see how bad this poor little guy would get cracked on. Well, not little actually. Cedar Pelta could get up to 7 meters long and 5 metric tons. Actually, that's worse, because we have a giant dinosaur with a tiny dick. I mean club. Ah, never mind. What matters is that it has a small club. That brings us to the big question. How exactly did the club evolve? We know there are two parts, the handle which is part of the tail and the knob which is the head of the club, but which came first? What's the point of having a stiff tail tip if there's no knob? And what's the point of having a knob if the tail can't support it? Victoria Arbor of North Carolina State University states that in order to find out how this happened, three ankylosaur species were analyzed, Leonangosaurus, Gobosaurus, and Pinacosaurus. This led to the conclusion that the handle formed before the knob, instead of both parts evolving simultaneously, unlike the giraffe. Why? The tail is already a deadly weapon without armor. Just look at Diplodocus, which used its tail as a whip like Indiana Jones. The handle hardened first, and later, osteocytes clustered around the tip to form the deadly knob. The fossil record clearly shows this transition from Cedar Pelta to Diopolosaurus to Euoplocephalus to Anodontosaurus and finally Ankylosaurus. Now for some random questions. Could this evolve again? Of course the armor could evolve again, it just exists in a different form. Body armor has evolved many times in the history of life. Ever seen a pangolin? Or a turtle? What about the tail? Absolutely. Look at the sauropod Shunosaurus, which evolved a tail club independent of common descent. Did Ankylosaurus have the best armor of any dinosaur? 
Well, best is pretty subjective, but look at this badass. This is Zora Pelta. Look at that armor. Imagine watching that thing r charge at you in the middle of battle with Conan the Barbarian riding it. That'd give any Ankylosaurus a run for his money. Okay, maybe I'm going too far into science fiction now, and that's a good thing, because the last question is completely science fiction. Who would win a fight? Stegosaurus or Ankylosaurus? Both are among the largest diarrhea forms to ever exist. In the end, I'd have to call it for the asteroid that ended both of their lineages. Did you see that coming? Neither did the dinosaurs, because no matter what weapons they evolved, nothing could prepare them for the selective pressures of the end of the Mesozoic. But one lineage did survive. The mammals, which you're part of. So give yourself a pat on the back, because our lineage survived what even the strongest ankylosaur couldn't. After learning all about the Ankylosaurs, it's hard to see why they aren't more popular. In fact, only one person that I know of says Ankylosaurus is their favorite dinosaur, and he's one of the Banta Boys. This is a collab channel some friends and I made, and it's a variety channel. You'll find everything from rants to gaming, vlogs to challenges, anything. If you want to check out their content, click here or click the link in the description. Keep learning, and as always, thanks for watching.